the Strongsville, Ohio Card Show. Lots of people refer to this as the Vintage National, and you're going to see why here in a second. Almost every single dealer here is a dealer that will set up at the National, and there's just an insane, insane selection of vintage that you're going to be able to find. It's basically the National, but condensed down into a small room, and there's really no sifting through anything else. It's purely, purely vintage. And look at some of the displays here. These are absolutely mind-blowing. Look at all these T206 Thai Cobbs right here. And this is just one of the tables there. I didn't do an amazing job of capturing all the tables because it was extremely crowded in there. But I did try to get as much as I could. If you enjoy just looking at cards, kind of like a museum, uh, maybe cards you can't quite afford, but just amazing looking cards that you never get to see anywhere else besides the National. This is the place to be. You had some of the major auction houses there like Mile High Auctions and Heritage Auctions. And like I mentioned earlier, some of the very best vintage dealers in the world. Uh, this was a three day show. It was Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So sorry again if I couldn't get quite as many clips of display cases that I was hoping, but I did manage to pick up some pretty cool stuff, so I'll show you guys that. Here's some of the stuff I got on the first day when I was there. You can see the 48 Leaf Phil Rizzuto rookie. Got a Johnny Bench rookie there. A couple T206s, those were for my dad's polar bear back. We got the 34 Gaudi Fox, 59 All-Star Maze. A couple Gaudis in there, which some of them I'll get to later. Some nice worldwide gums. The 40 Playball Hannes Wagner. And then uh, this nice little lot of some Cracker Jack Commons. Now let's take a look at some of the stuff I got on the second day. Like I said, a whole bunch of raw cards. I managed to get a couple more slabs on the second day. So let's go through them and show you guys what I got. Starting off with a fun one. This is 1933 Looks exactly like the Gaudi, but this is actually the 33 Worldwide Gums. So this is the Canadian version. Uh, these are significantly rarer. I looked this one up, this Eddie Collins here, and there was only 15 ever graded by PSA in any condition. So that was a really cool find. And then another kind of interesting one here. This is the Red Roughing. And you would think they're from the same year, but they actually reused the same pictures from 1933 in 1934 so this is actually a 34 worldwide gum and this eddie collins here is a 1933 a little weird a little cool and definitely very rare i would recommend picking these up if you guys see them there's just not a lot of them around and you could tell here by on the back it'll have some french typing at the top so it'll have the text also in french at the top and the bottom it'll say worldwide gum co Montreal so that's how you know where it says printed in Canada that's how you're gonna know and this one the 34 up top will tell you printed in 1934 next up was another Gaudi a 34 so it's a Heine Manish I'd say it's kind of filler condition but you know me I always buy Gaudis basically whenever I see them this is another set that I absolutely love 38 Gaudi Al Lopez these ones are incredibly tough. If you can get a Hall of Famer, this is one of my favorite sets to buy if you can even find them. Next up was a 40 play ball Hannes Wagner. Not a bad card at all. It's pretty good shape. I'd say probably in the three to four range. I'm not sure if I'm gonna grade it yet, but that was a nice one. Got two of these. These Joe Gordon. This is, I believe he is in the Hall of Fame. And this is his rookie, the Leaf. So they both have some paper loss on the back, but still some pretty cool cards and an awesome, awesome set. Another Leaf card to go along with that, the Phil Rizzuto. This was my first pickup of the show at all, so you guys probably saw this in the previous picture. A nice Phil Rizzuto, pretty good shape, probably three to four condition, something like that. A 52 Tops Phil Rizzuto. This one is also in good shape. I'll probably just keep these cards raw. I don't mind selling them raw at all. Got this 53 Tops Mignoso. Does have a mark on the back, but otherwise looks really sharp. The 59 All-Star Maze. This one is sharp. This one's probably around a five, four and a half or five. It's just got the back off center. It's probably its main problem. 
Another maze to go along with it, 64 tops maze. Not bad. Now I know I mentioned it earlier, but compared to any other show that I've been to, there was a ton, and I mean a ton of raw cards. Almost all the dealers were probably 80% raw cards. And if they had slabs, they were gonna be super high end, probably sevens and above. So that's why I walked away with a whole bunch of raw cards, including this Johnny Bench rookie. This was like my second buy of the day, I think. Got this pretty close to as soon as I walked in the door. My first buy from the Greeny show, it was at the very first table as soon as I walked in. Got this Nolan Ryan rookie. Now this one's probably poor conditioned. As you can see, this corner up here is pretty, pretty chipped, or I don't know exactly what happened, but still a Nolan Ryan rookie. And just a couple more left. Let's see, got two 72 tops mazes, a Steve Garvey rookie, the 71 tops, and then a 69 Hank Aaron. There's the crease. It is pretty crease, but I got it at a good price. So that was all the raw cards I got. There was some pretty awesome slabs though. I managed to get these the second day when I was walking around. Started off with these two rookies. This Jim Palmer and Gaylor Perry, high grade rookies. Seven and a 7.5. It's a dealer I buy from a lot. And he said he just sent stuff in, sent in cards he thought would grade well. And these ones certainly did. So I was super happy to pick these ones up. And a 34 Gaudi Jimmy Fox. This one is super cool card, even in a one condition. People love this card. It's got the same picture as his 33, but just an awesome looking card and a really cool set. And one more, the biggest pickup of the whole show, of the whole weekend, this 1939 play ball, Joe DiMaggio, such an awesome looking card. SGC2. It does look really nice though. All four of the corners are nice. It's pretty well centered for that set. It just has a stain in the top corner, but otherwise looks amazing. And it doesn't get much better than Jolton Joe. So we'll set him up here also. And then I'll show you guys a couple of the other things I grabbed towards the end of the show. This is a stack of 1953 Topps Commons. So I was managed to grab those and then just some other nicer ones that I had pulled out. Got a Dom DiMaggio in there, so pretty cool. And then I managed to buy another lot of more commons, but these ones were 52s. So I got a big pile of those as well. I paid $8 a card for the 52s, which they're in decent shape. So I thought that was a pretty good price. I know I've been seeing a lot of people talk about how much 52 commons are going up recently just with some recent sales of some big eBay lots. There's people paying between 10 to 12, sometimes even more per card on big lots on eBay. So I figured it wasn't a bad buy at that price. 